So I'm here at ASGND uh, down here off Thunderbird Road and Adam here, they're going to convert this car and actually upgrade it to a flex fuel vehicle. Now Adam, how do you upgrade a car to run on ethanol? Well, you may or may not be aware, Tom, that there are cars on the road right now, they're called flex fuel vehicles, and they will run on either uh, E85 ethanol, gasoline, or any combination of the two. Uh, they're running around all over the place and you'd never know unless you saw the little sticker on the back of them. They'll say flex fuel or FFV. There are Tauruses, there are Impalas, there are trucks, there are all kinds of cars out there running on flex fuel right now. And what we've seen in the recent months with the gas prices the way they are is because ethanol is so much cheaper, sometimes up to $1.20 a gallon less than gasoline, there's a huge demand for people wanting to upgrade their, their regular gasoline burning car to a flex fuel vehicle, and we can now do that. Now, this is the uh, 2005 Nissan Altima six cylinder. Uh, this car qualifies, right? You can upgrade this? Yes, practically, practically any car uh, newer than 1995 can be upgraded to flex fuel. Not all of them, but 99% of them can be. Okay, so Adam, we're gonna go to Montana this summer. I'm getting ready for a big trip. Okay. This car has 94,000 miles, never been tuned up. All right. So I'm hoping you can kind of get this up to snuff and then upgrade me so I can save a little bit of gas money on my trip to Montana. Why don't you show us how to do that real quick? All right, we can do that. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do, Tom, is we've hooked up the car to our diagnostic computer here and we're gonna take some readings off of how the car's running. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is check for diagnostic trouble code. The car has the ability to store any codes in there that might indicate any drivability problems that you've had over the, uh, over the last few weeks. It shows up pretty clean for 94,000 miles and never having been touched, it's running pretty well. Everything's operating fairly normally. The oxygen sensors, because they're old and they're about 94,000 miles, generally you want to replace those anyway at 100,000 miles. They're accurate, but they're moving very slowly. So I think what we're going to do before we convert this car is put two new upstream oxygen sensors in it. We're going to put fresh plugs in it, and we'll make sure all the filters are clean. Then this will be ready for the microprocessor. Okay, now that we've got the car running in perfect order, uh, at its peak efficiency with new plugs, new oxygen sensors, new fuel and air filters, this car is running perfectly. Now it's time to install the microprocessor for the flex fuel upgrade. And the way our microprocessor works, simply enough, it's an input-output device. And what we've got here is a computer that we'll hook to power. And each cylinder has an input and an output. This is a fuel injector connector that I just took off of the number three fuel injector. You take your input plug those together and then the other end will go on the fuel injector. You do that for all six. We route our cables so that they're nice and neat and then mount the computer in a clean dry place. Sometimes inside the car, sometimes we can find a good place in the engine compartment. But we'll go ahead and finish this job and then see how she runs. Okay, Adam, that looked pretty simple. And now my car is a flex fuel vehicle, that's all? It looks a little easier than it is, but but yes. It's, <laughs> now that it's done, it runs great. It is now a flex fuel vehicle. The only thing left to do is to mark it just like the manufacturer does, that Perfect. it's a flex fuel vehicle. And then all we have to do is go get some of that inexpensive, clean, renewable ethanol I, I at a dollar, dollar a gallon less than gasoline. I, 